I'll be standing the other side most of the, of the time, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about deer and what we're going to be doing and a few things in general before we get started. How many of you have been deer hunting or with somebody? Okay, great. So, you know that in order to have a deer, you have to have a license or a tag for it. And this is no different. Uh, this is what this tag on the back leg here is. Uh, when you hit a deer with a car, the law is such that you may keep the deer if you wish. But if you wish to keep it, you must contact the sheriff's department. They must come to you and give you this tag. Don't, and I repeat, don't pick up the deer and put it in your trunk and be all set and ready for the sheriff to come. Sometimes the sheriff will come, sometimes a game warden will come. If the game warden comes, you have that deer in your trunk of your car, you have it in your possession, and you have no license, no permit, and you're in deep trouble. So don't pick it up. Wait until they come, give you this tag, and once they give you this tag, it's yours, and you can do with it whatever you wish. Take it wherever you wish. Take it home to bed with you if you want to, but that's yours. Nobody will question it, so most people are first going to take it to a butcher shop or take it home and butcher it to get some of the meat. There is not a lot of meat on a deer. People sometimes think it's just like a cow, and it takes a lot of deer to make the same amount of meat as on one cow. Most deer weigh just a little over 100 pounds, and the steers that we end up and buy meat from out of the store uh, weigh 16 times that much. So don't look for a lot of meat for, from deer hunting. It's the pleasure of being out there. Now, I have a question for you. When this deer is alive and it's running free and goes across the farmer's field or whoever it happens to be, whose deer is that? If it jumps over my fence and goes to his farm, does that change anything? Yes, if it's on their land, in order to shoot it, you've got to have permission from the land owner. Yeah, you have to have permission from an owner to hunt on the land. But before you have permission, they say this is the 4th of July. There is no hunting season. That deer is running around in the woods. Who owns it? Who does that deer belong to? Well, it's got to belong to somebody. Everything belongs to somebody, except maybe the air. But even that's a lot of laws there. You can't pollute it from one place to affect somebody else. So I think everything is owned by somebody. The deer belongs to the state. The state of Wisconsin owns it. When a deer runs across into Rockford, Illinois, then the state of Illinois owns the same deer when it crosses back and forth. The deer has no sense of boundary between Wisconsin and Illinois. We do, but the deer does not. And if the deer runs across the farmer's field, the farmer does not own it. The state DNR manages it, takes care of the laws and care and so forth of deer, as well as lots of other animals and fish. But Technically, the state is what owns it. But who is the state? The no, the governor is one person. We elect as our leader, but he's not the state. The government? Yeah, who is the government? It's all of us. You own yesterday or two days ago when this deer was alive, three, you owned this just as much as I did. None of us do really. It belongs to the state. The state is people. So our laws in our country were changed or we made different, I shouldn't say changed, they were made different when the early pilgrims and so forth came to this country. In that they did not want things slipping. 
they did not want things to be like they were in Europe. In Europe, the rich landowner, or whoever the landowner was, owned all of the animals, birds, fish on that land. The poor people who did not own land owned nothing. They could not hunt or fish in Europe because they didn't own the land. So when they came to this country, they said, we're going to do things differently. And so the animals belong to the state, not to individual property owners. So whether you've got 10 cents in the bank or 10 million, it does not make any difference if you can afford to buy the deer license or fishing license, uh, then you can use it. And you can hunt deer if you have that permission from the landowner. And if you don't, then you have to hunt in what is called public land, public hunting grounds. And you're familiar with all of that. The point which we're stressing, if you're with your folks sometime, and if they should hit a deer, and I hope you don't, because it can be very, very harmful. I talked with a good friend the other day, and he, he said, I always used to say, how can people not see deer? Why are they hitting them? And he says, I hit one, and I never saw it at all. Never saw it coming. Right in the middle of his new truck, $9,000 to repairs. And he is lucky because it didn't come through the windshield. And you know that a deer runs, they jump. And if you hit it when it's in the top of the jump, it's coming right across the hood, and bam, it's like that. And it goes right through the windshield, and you and the deer will be in the back seat with a whole pile full of glass. And it's a mess. And it's very unhealthy, to say the least. So you really be alert. And if you're riding in a car, you can be watching for deer just as well as the driver. And you can help somebody. So we don't pick up the deer. You don't touch them. If the deer is still alive, you have to get somebody from the sheriff's office to come and shoot it, or a game warden. You cannot do that. You cannot shoot it. You say, oh, I'm putting it on 